So it's spring now and we've got several grafted fruit trees and I just wanna highlight some of the todays and share some of the updates and grafting tips from the past so you can see the before and afters. And I hope you enjoy this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics. Hi, my name's Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. And I encourage all of you guys to check out ivoryorganics.com on the first of every single month to check out what special news we've got going on and special deals at the Ivory Organics store. Today, I wanna to share with you before spring passes how beautiful your grafted trees can look in the spring and just some of the efforts of the things that we've taught together over the last several years. And I just wanna share with you what spring looks like, which again, you see these magnificent blooms behind me are gonna result in some of the best tasting fruit pretty soon. So just behind me here, you may have noticed these double blooming, beautiful hot pink flowers of the Red Baron Peach, but that's just one of several fruits that are grafted on this multi-grafted in the Prunus family fruit tree. And of all of the fruits that you could be grafting, this here is one of the most exciting in the sense of the diversity of plants that you can get on there, ranging from almonds to peaches to nectarines, cherries, apricots, plums, apriums, pluots, so much more can all be grafted onto the same rootstock. One tree trunk supporting dozens if not hundreds of flavors of fruit in addition to color. We're gonna come back to this, but let me share with you another tree growing here on the property. And this here is the 10 in one fig tree, 10 flavors of figs from black to brown to green, even the striped tiger panache, among many other flavors of figs. We're gonna be revisiting this. And for those of you that have been following us for many years, you guys remember that this here used to be the grandpa Saman fig that was measuring about 15, 20, 20 plus feet tall, and we pruned it down in the lesson called Why Prune the Giving Fig Tree to create this now beautiful, under control, ideal backyard orchard fruit tree that's supporting 10 flavors of fig with most of the fruit within reach. And let me share with you the third grafted fruit tree in the backyard orchard that I wanna share with you. Follow me. And this here is my Lisbon lemon tree that we then pruned and since grafted now with ponderosa lemons, which are the largest of lemons, in addition to Mexican limes and kumquat. So we've got four flavors of citrus growing again on one rootstock. And I'm gonna share with you just some of the benefits in a moment. And these are the trees that I'm gonna be featuring and explaining some tips today. And then also taking you back in the past so you can see what it was um, and just sharing the excitement of what grafting can accomplish in your backyard orchard. Let's get started. In my experience of all the fruits that you can graft together, those in the Prunus family are the most exciting, both one in the varieties of flowers, in addition to the diversity of fruits they can have on a single rootstock. Over here, just check this out. These beautiful burgundy plums. And just check this out, you can see the stem goes to now this branch, which then is grafted with the Red Baron peaches. Check out how magnificent. Of all the flowers in the Prunus family, this is one of the most showy, the Red Baron peach. And then just behind that, we've got some pluots. You can see with these white flowers, these were more of a magnificent show about a week ago, and you can now see there's some fruit Right there, if I can get this branch. You can see there's now some fruit hanging. And as you work away back down, check out these peach flowers, which is what we're more used to seeing, those little, you know, smaller, dull pink flowers. This is the Babcock peach. And then if we work our way to this side of the tree, you can see the magnificent white blooms of the royal apricot. And this was more of a show a few days ago. And let me see if I can find some fruit set as well. Right there. So that's a single tree that we've trained to support five flavors of fruit so far. One helpful tip before we go back in the past 
is I want to share with you that the rootstock will continuously push out sucker growth. And it's your responsibility to make sure that you remove the sucker growth so that the resources, when we go to fertilize, for example, with the Ivory Organic All-Purpose Fertilizer, that give your plants all six, not just the three macronutrients that you'll find in most fertilizer products, but all six macronutrients that those elements are going into the tree to benefit the grafted varieties and flavor of fruit. So take a look at all the sucker growth. This here is all plum. So this is from the rootstock. If you go back up, you can see we've grafted here, right at where my, I'm pointing, we've grafted now the red barren peaches. If we allow the sucker growth to continue, it'll be to the detriment of the grafted flavor above, and that'll be to the detriment of the red barren peaches. So all of the sucker growth needs to be removed early and continuously throughout the season to ensure that all of the growth grows towards the selected scion flavors that you want on your tree. Now enjoy this lesson from the past when this tree was young and some of our initial grafting lessons that we taught you in the years past. Enjoy this. Trying to get right into the middle of the stem. There we go. So that cut's been made. We're gonna fit those two like so. Here we are now. You can see that we basically have the two trees grafted into one. To watch those lessons on prunus grafting tips, be sure to click the video links down below in the video description for the entire educational lesson that we did in the years past. And now let me share with you our 10 in one fig tree and some helpful tips on that grafting lesson. So this here is my 10 in one fig tree that we grafted together over the last about four to five years. This was originally the Grandpa Saman green fig, and we have since grafted onto it flavors such as the Kadoda, the Raspberry Latte, the Tiger Panache, the Chicago Hardy, Strawberry Vert, the Celestial, the Brown Turkey, um, the Bourgeoiset Noir, the Saint Rita, and I might be missing one. I think I already said Chicago Hardy. But anyways, we've got 10 flavors of figs on here. And the way we did this is we simply took a small fig cutting. If you hopefully participate in this February free fig cutting giveaway, which we do every single year on the February 1st is when the announcement happens. So again, it's also a good idea to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, whatever your social media platform is that you like the best. We put our announcements up there and we give away free fig cuttings from, you know, thousands of cuttings that we collect from gardens predominantly across California, but other states as well. And once you successfully root your cutting, you can then do what's known as the approach graft throughout spring, summer, and even early fall, where you'll simply approach graft, as you can see over here, this here is the scion wood. So this here controls the flavor of the celestial fig. And what we did is we simply did an approach graft, leaning this rooted plant, and we secured the root in the container up in this you know area. And then we basically did a surgery into the root stock and the root stock and the scion plant together healed over the course of about two to three months. And then we basically did a cut at the bottom of the scion and at the very top of the root stock. And now the flow of nutrients comes here from the root stock and goes to support the scion wood, which is the desired flavor of now celestial that we have growing on top of the grandpa Saman root stock. And here we go. And then we're going to remove the scion wood. So again, this here is of the variety. If you take a look over here, it's called the um, black mission fig and it's growing on a rootstock that produces green figs. And we're now going to remove the scion wood like so. And now we can remove this plant as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the, the twine like so. We'll just cut that off, just, which is also another delicious variety of fig. But now we get to enjoy 10 flavors of figs on one tree instead of having to plant 10 trees, which would hog up 
the majority of the backyard space. Another benefit and advantage of having 10 flavors of figs in one garden. And now let me share with you our citrus. So just as before, we've got this grafted variety and sucker growth happening below it. This here is a Lisbon lemon. We've got the Lisbon lemon variety growing over here, but this here is just more Lisbon lemon. But since it's coming from below the grafted union, which this here is where we did the graft in the past, I'm gonna take you to see that in just a moment where we started this. But this here is growth from below the rootstock. This here being the rootstock, these here are the scion flavors. Over here, you can see the beautiful um, flowers of the Mexican lime. Check out how teeny tiny those are. And there's more blooms over here. Just check out all of that new growth. And then just behind it is, again, one of the largest of the lemon varieties. And this here is the Ponderosa lemon. You can just see how successful this graft and so these here are two of the approach graphs that we did together. You can see over here where it was once attached to the original plant that was in its container sitting in this area. And we allowed the two to heal and become one and callus. I'm still supporting it with some nylon string. Um, and I'm going to share with you the kumquat in just a moment. But let me get rid of some of the sucker growth, even though it is Lisbon lemon and will make delicious citrus. Um, I want to make sure, again, those resources that are coming in this vicinity only go to the benefit of these two flavors. And otherwise, that sucker growth will grow to the detriment of these. The sucker growth will grow significantly faster than the wounded, you know, callus tissues that we've got here. And we want to keep on encouraging the plant to make sure that all of those resources are staying here. And now, um, again, what we've got over here, this is something new. And so over here, we have successfully grafted on the kumquat. You can see this here is again, another approach graft technique. It's successfully has calloused. Check out all of the new growth and more growth on this Nagami kumquat. So we're gonna have baby little oranges just behind it, some baby green limes behind it, some giant ponderosa lemons, and just behind that, some medium sized Lisbon lemons. But the tie on here, I've got some fishing nylon string over here. We need to take it off. And this is part of um, one of the tips in our grafting lessons that we did, even back here on the lime and ponderosa lemon, we used the nylon string, but you gotta make sure that if you use it, that you take it off by like the eighth to 10th week. By the time you see that grafting success, otherwise the string is gonna find itself embedded into the bark. So we're gonna carefully remove that. In the meantime, enjoy this blast from the past lesson when this tree was younger about a year or two ago and some of the grafting tip, tips that we shared in that lesson. Enjoy. And so I'm gonna be preparing to cut down the bark using my grafting knife. Let me push the tree out of the way going straight down in this zone right here. And then we're gonna open the bark on this side as well. Just loosening it. When cutting into the tree, you don't wanna go past halfway into the diameter of this scion wood. Here we go. We'll cut that there. And now we're gonna slip this in So we've just grafted the dwarf Mexican, also known as the key lime, onto the Lisbon lemon, serving as a rootstock, as you can see here with the white flowers behind it, the ponderosa with the purple buds. And we grafted the ponderosa in the back, the key limes here in the front. So now that we got the nylon string off, you can see that we've quite severely harmed, not just the bark, but there's a lot of exposure also with this calloused grafted wound that we're gonna protect now, in addition to the entire tree trunk. Look at how much sun is hitting the tree trunk, not just here on this grafted now kumquat, but also on these grafted branches as well. There used to be a larger canopy offering shade to the lower tree trunk and branches, but without protection in a gardening concept known as whitewashing, the tree will burn and suffer first, second and third degree burns. There's a deputy that I spoke with that's in Horticultural Agricultural Commission, 
And he's like, what's the big deal? He's like, I've seen sunburn on plants. They'll survive on the shady side of the plant. And that's true. The south and southwest side of the tree is gonna burn and suffer, but the backside will still carry the nutrients and supply the energy and the plant may overall look okay. But I'm like, how is it fine that the plant is only living on half of its resources instead of all of them? And don't we want our plants to be long lasting, healthy and have, you know, it's optimal longest possible life in your garden. Additionally, I said, if it's suffering first, second and third degree burns, you got one side of the tree that's gonna have no bark, be exposed to invading beetles and termites and another reason and an easy quick fix by simply whitewashing. And if you take a look, this is the tree we whitewashed in color white about a year ago. Note again, this is not latex paint. If this was paint, we would have now paint flakes going into our soil and sitting in there for about a hundred years. But this is a product known as, as many of you that are subscribed already know, the Ivor Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, which is Armory listed for organic use, protection against damaging summer sunburn and winter sun scald, insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, um, and shrubs, and for use in organic production, healthier than, as we just explained, latex paint tar-based products, which again are designed to last 100 years, will contaminate your garden soil, and additionally on pruned branches, trap moisture and contribute to underlying rot, whereas this product dries on porous. Instead of doing color white, what I want to share with you is a new exciting color. And this here is the color grayish. And I feel like this is such an awesome color for your avocados and citrus tree as it has a gray and brown tint to it. Again, this is color grayish. And let's go and brush some of this color on so you can see what it looks like on the tree. So you can see it no longer looks whitewashed, but it's still repelling excess light, offering the bark protection. So all of the cracks that are between the grafted scion and the rootstock and that are, you know, entry points for beetles, termites and disease and mildew and mold are now going to be sealed with, again, the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, which has seven natural oils in it, which include castor and cinnamon and clove and garlic and peppermint and rosemary and spearmint. Um, seven natural oils that are insect and rodent repellent protection as well as disease resistance. Additionally, there's diatomaceous earth in this product. So as we're brushing on diatomaceous earth, that's further gonna also help repel pests from damaging the plant. If there's pests already in the heart of your tree or you've seen beetles and termites penetrating the plant, then you can also apply the product and when they bore their way back out of the tree, they're also gonna harm themselves as they go through the oils and also additionally furthermore with the diatomaceous earth which is going to scratch their bodies and lead to the insects des desiccation for those of you that have been following me for the last several years you know that my greatest passion in the horticultural field is grafting of the hundreds of topics that we could discuss. I love the miracle of surgery and grafting trees. And we've done so much over the years. Again, a lot of those lessons, again, I'm putting in the video description below. So you can watch tree by tree, plant by plant, garden to garden, um, home to home, and all of the you know interesting visitors that we've also had on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel, you can watch all relating to the miracle of grafting. And one of the one of several reasons for grafting is one, in such a small footprint of a tree, you can enjoy so many delicious fruit. Something we've already said, but another reason for grafting is you may visit a friend or um, a gardening group and they've got a fruit that's related to something you have on your property. And it's another awesome way to bring that plant into your property without having to buy another plant by simply just getting a couple of inches, two to three inches piece off that plant is I the ideal amount that you need in order to begin grafting and introducing those flavors into your backyard orchard. If you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. For those of you that have not yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification so you stay informed of these lessons as soon as they become made available. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.